Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk, where we zoom in on the practical implications and the next steps after the big EAO Congress session about the management of severely compromised dentitions. My name is Garrett Heikoper and I'm very happy and proud to be joined by the chairs of this session here at the Congress, Helena Francisco from Portugal. Welcome, Helena. Hi, Garrett. Thank you so much for having us here. Yes, and it's a great honor to also have with us Mariano Sanz from Spain. Mariano, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us and it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, you just walked off stage. You're still glowing a little bit, full room, everybody happy. But let's start with the basics. Why in this EAO 2024 Congress, we need to talk about managing the severely compromised dentitions? So management of the severely compromised dentition might be a very, I would say, um, great topic. What does that mean? Because what can be a severely compromised dentition to me probably might not be to another person. And if you go to the literature, there is a gray zone in definition uh, about severely compromised dentition. It can be periodontal, it can be also uh, endodontic, or even for structural reasons like decay, uh, etc. Um, and so, so the compromise is gray. Yes. What is it actually compromised by? Okay, clear. It's compromised by. Yeah, that's clear. But that, what is the cause? Uh, yeah. The cause. There may be several several reasons. And nowadays we are running to um, a society and to patients that are more demanding and they want things for yesterday. They want immediacy. And sometimes we see certain situations that those teeth would be salvageable. We could save those teeth and those teeth are being extracted for the wrong reasons, not for the correct reasons. So implants were made to replace missing teeth, not to replace teeth. Aha. Mariano, you see that trend as well, more demanding patients and the dentist just going with the flow and extracting teeth that are healthy? Well, a very important issue is that uh, the technology that we have today is so advanced that the concept of hopeless is perhaps uh, a missing concept because we have uh, great technology to treat endodontically affected teeth. We mm. have great technology to treat periodontally affected teeth. And we have a fantastic technology to replace teeth in case we extract them. Exactly. So we train our students, the dentists get training to use these technologies. Uh, and therefore, exactly what Elena said, uh, if you are more prone to implants, you will have a great technology to replace teeth. Uh, but what we need to basically reinforce and emphasize is that beyond the technology, we have a patient. And the patient has also expectations. And the patient uh, also has behaviors. Mm -hmm. Because for some of these technologies, I would say for all these technologies, success or failure depends on the patient's behavior. Uh -huh. So well, do, I, do I hear a warning here in the CEO of Congress where we say, well, to a carpenter, everything is a nail. Saying, well, if you are an implantology Congress and we all talk about implantology all day, we're going to do implants for everyone. But actually here you say, wait a second, we need to reconsider. What is the biggest risk if we are not careful enough or move too fast forward with the implants? Well, the main risk is that uh, it's irreversible. Uh, you lose the teeth. You yeah. cannot have the teeth back. So what do you say to someone who says, yeah, but an implant is an improvement because titanium never fails? No, that's not true. Titanium fails. And the literature is very clear on that. And uh, Professor Jean Carimes presented that, that uh, he showed the case on immediate placement and loading. But... Please be very careful, but because in the long run, we might have some complications like bone loss, peri, peri implantitis. And above all, when we do this type of cases and we select to go for dental uh, implants in when a hopeless dentition is, is present, this patient needs to be educated. And we cannot go to a full arch rehabilitation without that patient being properly educated and also be aware of the maintenance pro protocols because maintenance is crucial for the success of these of these type of cases. 
Yeah, I hear what you say, but now take me into the clinic. Here I walk in, I'm missing several teeth, I was in an accident, but now the dentist is telling me, well, Garrett, are you willing to... I mean, what is this conversation like? I'm just here, fix my smile. No, but the, the issue is that through great improvements in technology, we may be prone, right? Because you say, Garrett, I can fix your smile. I take the remaining teeth out, implants in, off right. we go. We may be prone to, to really use dental implants uh, as a commodity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then say, okay, you are buying a Mercedes. This is the best possible solution. Uh, and it is so good that you may not even have to maintain it which is a completely wrong concept. Exactly. Ah, now I get you. So, so it isn't a plug and fix, set it and forget it. It's like a life change of cleaning, I guess, maintenance. What other stuff does it mean in my life when I get an implant? First, you need to compromise to it. You need to clean it like it was um, uh, your, natural, your natural tooth. And then you have to come to recalls to, be, to go for maintenance, for oral hygiene, check if everything is okay. And depending if you have risk factors or not, the protocols might be different. Because if you're healthy and if you have a good, a good oral hygiene and you have one implant, probably every six months will be more than, than enough. But if you have probably more implants... Severely compromised, yes, yeah. If we go now to severely compromised uh, cases, probably these patients need to uh, come more often to the office, probably restrict the intervals for, for dental maintenance, but also homework is crucial also for the success of these type of treatments with dental implants. Exactly. And Mariano, I hear you say, not only is the patient not aware, but the way implantologists and the ease that we offer this solution is not helping us. Right, uh, but this, of course, don't misunderstand me in the sense to say that uh, implant-supported restorations do not work. They work beautifully. Yeah, maybe even a little bit too well now and then. That's what I hear you but, say. But uh, we cannot lose sight that also we have technologies to maintain teeth for life. And also oh, yeah. we can do a lot of things even in, in severely affected dentitions. We can do ortho, we can do endo, we can do prosthesis. Uh, so we cannot switch the mentality of dentists uh, to say that uh, dental implants is the only solution. It's a great solution, uh, but we have patients behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and the patients have the right to understand what the different options according to the technology that we utilize today. And also the patients have the right to say that is not what they get, uh, is how they have to maintain it for mm -hmm. life. Because one of the challenges that we are going to get, are getting, is that the people get older. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be a very high risk if you maintain implants fixed in your jaws and you are not able to maintain them clean. Uh, so and, and when you say this can be a big risk, are we just talking about the risk of failing implants or peri-implantitis, or are you talking about other risks? I'm talking about health risks. Right. Because th natural teeth exfoliate. Mm -hmm. Implants do not exfoliate. And w to what can that lead? Um, this, is, this is new for me. What, what is the health risk involved? Well, the health risk is if you are 90 years mm -hmm. old mm -hmm. and you have a full arch rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And you are not able to clean it, mm -hmm. and you are in a in a home where the nurses do not clean it. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have an infection in your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. And from there, this can spread through the body. I see, I see, I see. Okay, this is a new story. <laughs> I think. Uh, what needs to happen once we walk away from this Milan Congress? What needs to happen, either in science or in the clinics? that will prevent us from having the same conversation next year. What, what, do you, what is your call to action for your audience here today? So first, I think scientifically, we need to have better guidelines that can guide people in dental uh, practice uh, when to save or when to extract a tooth. We have several art articles, but like we mentioned before, there's still a, a, a gray zone. And for the people that are in clinical uh, practice, I would like them to be aware that the success rates 
of a healthy tooth are better than uh, the success rates of uh, an implant. Yeah, okay, the, okay, okay. But now we are talking about a compromised tooth. Yes. Now what happens? You need to make a decision. And we cannot only focus on one tooth. We need mm -hmm. to focus on the whole oral cavity, but also the well-being uh, uh, of the patient. What is the patient expectations and also the patient, the patient needs. So you're saying, Elena, this... Our profession just came a whole lot more complex because we are not just fixing teeth or when they fail, placing implants, but it's a much more personalized kind of in dialogue approach with the patient. We treat patients, we don't treat teeth. First is the patient. But that's not the news in 2024, or is it? No, it's, I was taught by my mentors like that. We have a I have a patient in front of me and I'm not doing an implant. It's not the implant that is important. It's the patient. Yeah, but apparently even you were taught that by your mentor, we still need to keep reiterating that message. Of course. Of course, apparently. Mariano, what, do you, what, do you, what is your call to the colleagues besides the things you mentioned about, think about the broadness of your options. What do you hope they do when they go back to the clinic tomorrow? Well, my call is get very well trained, really adopt the best technology can offer to us yeah. in implant dentistry and also in general dentistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't narrow down too much don't narrow on a specific down much. specialty. Uh, but, uh, but always uh, uh, don't disregard the importance of the patient behavior and the patient uh, compliance and how to deal with patients. The problem is that if we place too much emphasis on uh, you know, digital analysis, guiding surgery, robotic implant surgery. You know, you, you don't need to see even the patient. You can do everything through your uh, uh, computer guidance and your, and at the end of the story, uh, these fantastic implant supported restorations that uh, you are going to make in that particular patient, or even a robot will make in that particular patient, will fail if the patient does not have the preventive measures exactly. that he or she should have. Is there a key factor that we know either from science or from practical experience, how to get this between the ears of your patient? Is it just dimension before we make the decision or have you come across other best practices to, to create this awareness in patients? No, but I mean, we are starting the whole conversation from the severe affected dentition. Yeah. Okay. So that patient has shown that he or she has the risk, the risk factors, the problems associated with dental disease, with oral disease. So that kind of inherent risk is not going to overcome no. by placing implants. Uh, no, and also not with one conversation with the dentist yes. before you place the implants. Right. Uh, so that uh, needs to have a, a, an overall uh, treatment approach so that the patient is really participant in not only in the decisions, but in the whole uh, treatment plan and treatment course. Uh, because if the patient is not uh, fully a participant, uh, it will be very difficult that these severely affected dentitions will function either with maintaining the teeth or with replacing the teeth with dental implants. Okay. And this is why I argue against this concept of uh, buying a Mercedes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But does that mean that we would have to go as far as to actually, like, like you only find out when it's too late, right? That's what I guess what I'm looking for. Is there a way to know in time whether perhaps this is no, not but, a patient but who we, is suitable for this? But we have the scientific evidence. Uh, you can find out whenever it's too late with a particular patient. Yeah. But you but know. Ah, in general, you, you can know, say we have the risk factors. the risk factors? And exactly. The and, and then you say we need to even better further improve yes, this kind of algorithm or decision tree on yes. to say when a certain approach is feasible. I think this, this, needs to be go f this needs to go further. 
popula um, population education. The population needs to be educated and be, needs to be aware of periodontal disease, decays and everything so people are able to do their oral hygiene at home properly in order to prevent uh, to get to a severely compromised dentition because sometimes patients come to the office really at the end where almost nothing can, can, can be done with a big periodontal comp um, compromise and, um, and then the only solution is probably replace by... And by we, mi we might be in situation hopeless after all again. All right. Sounds very interesting and a, and a refreshing message from you both and from this session. So uh, you made me curious. Thank you very much for coming here, Elena Francisco, Mariano Sanz. And if you're curious, check out the full session in the EO online library. The three speakers are Jao Caramesh from Portugal, Alberto Fonzar from Italy, and Konstantinas Koklidakis from the United States. Thank you for watching and looking forward to see you next time.